Hey friends, this is my last lecture on the series of lectures of properties of surfaces. In this lecture, I will try to give an understanding of the whole concept of polar moment of inertia. What is it all about? Let us see. In the previous two lectures, we have dealt about moment of inertia or the second moment of area. For example, if there is a body like this or suppose there is an irregular body like this, then this is if x is this is x axis and this is y axis, then i xx <coughs> that is the moment of inertia of the body about x axis is equal to the area of the total body into yc whole square where yc is nothing but is equal to the distance of the centroid from the xx axis or it can be written as y squared dA integration or y i squared dA i integration right and i y y is nothing but is equal to again y square or I should say x square dA i <coughs> this is also i and i is any point of the body and the integration of this i point will basically give me the moment of inertia about x or y axis now Taking this concept further, if we are to see what is the moment of inertia about the z-axis or the third axis. And this we can do basically by the perpendicular axis theorem, right? Which is like this, that if here is some sort of an element like dAi, then if this is equal to yi and this is equal to xi, then the moment of inertia about this x-axis and y-axis can be easily found out by these two equations. Now the moment of inertia about the z-axis is nothing but dAi into this, right? Where this is the distance of the force with respect to the axis which in, about which we are trying to find out the moment. So essentially, I z z is equal to nothing but r squared if this distance is r r squared d a i and i is a general point suppose now r squared as we can see from this equation is nothing but x i squared plus y i squared so this is equal to x i squared d a i where i is any general point plus y i squared d a i and this is essentially equal to i x x plus i y y this is nothing but it says that the moment of inertia about the z-axis is equal to the sum total of the moment of inertia about the x-axis and the moment of inertia about the y-axis. So essentially, I z z from perpendicular axis theorem is equal to I x x plus I y y. And this perpendicular axis theorem is what we utilize for finding out the polar moment of area or the moment polar moment of inertia. And this I, Z, Z, for example, let us take some kind of a rectangular cross section, right? This is suppose a rectangular cross section. Now this is my X, X axis. And the central and the neutral axis is effectively this. And this is my Y, Y axis. <coughs> now I, X, X is equal to nothing but 1 by 12. This is suppose B. And this is suppose H. So i x x is equal to nothing but 1 by 12 bh cube while i y y is nothing but is equal to 1 by 12 h b cube. So essentially i z z or the polar moment of inertia of, of, the new, of this rectangular section is equal to this two summation which is equal to 1 by 12 bh h squared plus b squared. So essentially this is how we can get the polar moment of inertia and this practical significance of this polar moment of inertia is that greater the polar moment of inertia more resistant it will be to some kind of a force called the torsional force and it won't rotate the beam won't rotate if if the beam's cross section is of a larger uh, polar moment of inertia that effectively means that ixx means that it it will resist bending about this axis right I y y means it would resist bending about this axis and I z z means it won't have that torsional force right so it will resist rotation about the z axis 
So this is the practical significance of this polar moment of area. And this we have learned from the, this lecture. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you. <clears throat>